In this short video, we're going to look at homogeneous linear equations and the superposition, superposition principle uh, for homogeneous equations. So let's go through some definitions. So what is a homogeneous equation? It's a differential equation where the right-hand side, when you write it in standard form, is identically zero. If instead of having zero, we have a function of x, we call that a non-homogeneous equation. Now, if we want to solve a non-homogeneous equation, our first step is to solve the corresponding homogeneous equation. We simply replace the g of x by zero and solve it. So from this point forward in the course, we're going to make the following assumptions. We're going to say that all of the coefficient functions in our linear equation and the right-hand side are continuous, plus we're going to assume that the leading coefficient function is not zero for all x in the interval of definition. And if you recall, those conditions uh, are enough with our initial value problem uh, if x naught is also in the interval of definition. Those conditions guarantee that we're going to have a unique so solution. We will also make use of the notion of differential operators and the notation that's used with differential operators. If you take a linear algebra class, you'll learn that an operator is simply the name of a special type of function. So differential operators are differential functions. Uh, so a differential operator, though, is a function of functions. Its inputs are not numbers. Its inputs are functions. And so it takes a function as an input applies coefficients and, der and takes derivatives, and then outputs then a new function using those derivatives and coefficients. The simplest differential operator is just capital D, which just means take the first derivative or take one derivative of the input function. So the derivative I'm sorry, d of x cubed would equal 3x squared. So the input function, the input is a function, and the output is a function as well. d of cosine of 4x would be the derivative of cosine 4x, which is negative 4 sine of 4x. If we put a superscript on an operator, that just means to apply that operator that number of times. So if I have a d squared of e to the 3x, that means apply that d operator. In other words, take the derivative of e to the 3x, get an output, and then take the derivative again. In other words, we're taking the second derivative. So, uh, And this is really the good way of thinking about it. We're going to take d of d of e to the 3x, which would be the equivalent to taking the second derivative. You can have more complicated differential operators. So for example, you could have a, an operator which uh, corresponds to the nth order linear differential equation. And so uh, for example, L would mean, OK, if you put a function here, you would take the nth derivative of the function, multiply it times the function a sub n of x. And then you would take the n minus 1 derivative of f and multiply it times this function. And so on until you get down to the first derivative multiplied times a1 of x, and then just some uh, coefficient uh, a sub 0 of x, which would be multiplied by the function without any derivatives. So you can think of this L as just being a shorthand for writing out that entire statement. 
Now, there's two fundamental properties that any differential operator will have. In fact, any operator itself will have. Uh, for the differential operators, it just comes from the properties of derivatives. An important property is that you can factor out a constant multiplier. And if you take the derivative of the sum, that's going to be the sum of the derivatives. And this is true not only for D, but for any differential operator. And so we can summarize that by saying, if I take alpha F times beta G, use that as my input to L, I can break that down by factoring out the constants and breaking up the sum into two applications of the operator L. Here, alpha and beta are constants. And uh, that gives us an opportunity here to introduce a phrase which describes alpha F plus beta G. We call that a linear combination of F and G. A linear combination means that you take the sum of multiples of a set of functions like f and g. We're going to see that phrase linear combination again here when we talk about the superposition principle. So this is an extremely important principle. What it says is that if you have k solutions of a differential equation, a homogeneous differential equation, then if you take any linear combination, in other words, if you multiply those solutions by constants and sum up the uh, result, you'll get another solution. So we use this a lot where we just say, you know what? If we've got a solution, we can multiply that solution by any convenient constant and we'll get another solution. And that constant could be chosen to be the zero, so c equals zero, which means if I take that solution, multiply it by zero, I get zero. That must be another solution. So every linear homogeneous differential equation has the trivial solution y of x is identically zero. So let's look at a couple of examples. I've got two solutions to this third order differential equation, which means that I could take any linear combination of those two solutions and I would get a new solution. Here's another example. Uh, y equals e to the power of 7x is a solution to this second order differential equation. So I could multiply that a solution by any constant I want, including zero, and I'll get a new solution. All right, so we've discovered that uh, we may have multiple solutions. And certainly, if I have any solution, I can take a constant multiple of it. And I also, if I have multiple solutions, I can take any or any linear combination of them. But what we need to learn, which is what we'll learn in a follow-up video, is among all those solutions, can we find what is known as a fundamental set? And we'll talk about that in our next video.